What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kind of Funny First Impressions. I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Barrett Courtney. What's up, Tim? I'm so, I'm See, so fucking excited, man. I was like, how long is he going to go? I hope he just keeps going forever, man. We are talking about Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. And ain't it the truth? It is about time. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, this game provided by Activision, uh, the demo at least, uh, provided by Activision for us to to try out. Uh, very, very thankfully, uh, they, they reached out to us and, and let both of us uh, play the game, play three different levels of, mm. of Crash Bandicoot for It's About Time. Uh, technically, it's it's two levels and a, a bonus level. We'll get into all the, the nitty gritty later because this is kind of funny first impressions. It's where we give our first impression of the latest and greatest video games coming out you can watch this show on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or you can listen to it too on your favorite podcast service just search for kind of funny first impressions if you're searching for it it might be an orange album cover that says debatable with jared petty's face on it uh for some reason there's some glitch on uh, apple podcast yeah hopefully that uh gets out of the way at some point um i think that subscribing and unsubscribing and resubscribing might help. I, I don't know. I, I, looked, I, don't know. I looked at the uh, top 100 uh, list under leisure, and it's still popping up as the orange uh, Jared Petty. So just look for Jared Petty's face. And it'll be there. Kind of funny <laughs> first impressions. Anyways, let's get into it, dude. Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Now, I want to start. I I, yeah. I got a, a about hour-long developer walkthrough Ooh. where he walked through um, just the first level that okay. we got to play. And then um, we, there was a Q&A. We got some questions. He gave us a whole bunch of facts and stuff. And then we got to actually play the game ourselves, like all weekend, like you and I have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to say that this game reminds me of two other video games. And this is going to sound like an insane compliment. And I mean it that way. It reminds me of Sonic Mania. Whoa. And Donkey Kong Country Tropical Whoa, Freeze. Oh, Tim! I think you're 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 putting the hype out there. Just I, I want you to know that you know people are going to hold you accountable for this amount of hype that you're putting out there. But here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. What's the thing? I agree with you. I fucking there agree. There you with go. You. There you go. <laughs> now I want to be clear before we we really get into it that the Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze aspect of it isn't necessarily the level of quality of the game. Uh, because I think. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is just one of the greatest platformers, period, of all time. Absolutely. Um, and, and there's something about it being tight and accessible, and like anybody can play that game and, and absolutely love it. This isn't that. Mm -hmm. This th this kind of that's why I also bring up Sonic Mania. But the point about Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is taking a older style of game, these like 2D platformers, but still making it feel new and modern, but still retaining what made the classic feel so good. Exactly. And the Sonic Mania side of it is obviously kind of going back and understanding that there's a type of game that's old. Sonic the Hedgehog, 2D Sonic games have their pros, have their cons. We all understand. But there's people that have nostalgia and love for the way those games feel, the way those games kind of issue challenge and focus on not necessarily always speed, but if you're really good, maintaining speed. And Mania was such a great job of this game is being made by fans. This game is being made by people that grew up playing these games and are trying to show uh, honor and pay homage to what the 2D Sonic games did best. That's exactly what Crash Bandicoot 4 is doing mm -hmm. for the Crash Bandicoot series. This is unapologetically a Crash Bandicoot one through three sequel. Oh yeah, absolutely, and and, and it's crazy because when uh, you Dorno and I reacted to the uh, to the reveal and stuff like that, we were wondering if like will it what what is this game going to be? What is it going to feel like? Uh, like we're talking about like concerns of like how some things look but still excited about like everything that they're introducing all these different masks that introduce powers is it going to feel gimmicky all of this stuff and I, like i was honestly blown away by how much i liked uh the demo like the the levels that we played so yeah like i was playing it so much over the weekend um and it was crazy of just like like f discovering like how especially like going back I had recently played through Crash 1 and a little bit of Crash 2 uh in the Insane trilogy recently and it was one of those things where I was like holy crap like they really like this feels like it could have been an OG Crash Bandicoot game from the PS1 era um and, and I I mean that in like the best possible way like if you're a fan of Crash Bandicoot this truly feels like a like a what should have been the next step for crash after crash warped 
Um, and so that that's where my, I, I'm at. I know you're a little more um, uh, read up on like crash after the fact, but like, oh, yeah. th- that, that's more like my mainstay was the original three games and that's pretty much it. So as someone who really likes uh, Warped growing up and then becoming a, a huge fan of all three games from the Insane Trilogy, um, the, this feels like a natural next step uh, that that doesn't feel super gimmicky in any way that's like, ah, uh, like uh, they're just trying to get a cash grab here. Like it, it does feel like a, a natural uh, step for, for Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, definitely, man. I, I feel like it, it. This very much is Crash Four, mm-hmm. uh, but I. And I know you weren't exactly saying this, but to be clear, this doesn't feel like it would have been possible on on PS One. And I'm not yeah. even just talking graphically. There's just design choices and some things uh, that, that that they're doing with this game that I really, really appreciate because they took the magic of the animation of Crash, just like the the way that he starts to run and it like has this kind of like. Looney Tunes-esque like magic to it and mm-hmm. they take that and enhance it throughout all the character designs the enemy designs like the way the death animations obviously like these core iconic crash things but there's so many like nice little uh, quality of life things that add into for the first time ever I feel like I'm fully in control of crash it still feels like he should feel mm-hmm. which granted is kind of wrong Interesting. like the, the, the OG crash games don't necessarily feel good to control. You never feel like you're fully in control of Crash. Mm, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not Mario. Like he has a weight to him that, that and slide to him and like things that are different, especially back on the original Crash games with the D-pad. Yeah. You're moving around a 3D space with a D-pad. Mm-hmm. Even in the Insane trilogy, you can use the analog stick, but like it was, it felt like he was mimicking D-pad motion. And, right? and, and yeah, it definitely was that. And I think that was like something. Um, that kind of took me, um, it, it caught me off guard definitely playing the demo because I was playing with playing the Insane Trilogy recently. It was one of those things where I was caught off guard of like how, did, like it was just subtle little things where I noticed like how reactive he was it, it, to move and stuff like that. And like the, the way he jumps and stuff. I was like, oh, this feels different. This feels weird. But uh, compared to the Insane Trilogy, but I think that's just because I have that so fresh in my mind that it was interesting of like, oh, it does feel like an actual, uh, like modern control scheme almost uh, in, in being able to control Crash. And it's it's funny because I feel like this game does such a good job of balancing uh, gameplay to, to keep every single moment feeling uh, engaging and worth it and not just like, oh, I want to get to the next part. Mm-hmm. The balance between the 2D sections and 3D sections feel better than they ever have. Mm-hmm. There's little subtle tweaks like now when you're in 2D, you can actually use the right stick to control the camera to look for hidden crates or look for uh, Wampa Fruit or stuff. And it's always something that I've wanted control over in the other games. Mm -hmm. And another thing is the idea of depth of field. Understanding where you're jumping has always been a big problem in in the Crash games. Absolutely. Because you don't know exactly how far your jumps can be or whatever. And now there's like this little yellow circle underneath you and a red circle underneath the enemy. So you always know where you're at. And at least in the version we played, you can't turn that off, Mm -hmm. Um, which is, I think, it doesn't look that pretty and it's not that aesthetically pleasing. I, it, it doesn't, it doesn't like really like pop out. Like it, it doesn't, it, it didn't like show out to like, Oh God, that's so hideous or gross, but it, it was like very, uh, a very helpful thing, which I, I'm sure they'll tweak around with, uh, before, before launch and stuff. But I, and I will be interested to see if they use that as a selectable thing that you can turn on and off. Um, I, I can't, they Im- will. I, I can't imagine why anybody would want to turn it off. Cause yeah, like that was like, so helpful. It, it is so helpful. And that was something like when I, uh, when I was playing crash one, it was especially those, uh, rickety bridge, uh, levels where I was like, I have no idea where not I'm well. about to land right not now. Not well. Um, and so it, I, I instead just use the, the, uh, the, um, handrail, uh, glitch where you can just walk on the handrail. Run into, on it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that was uh, something it, it caught me off guard and actually like fucks me up uh, a little bit, uh, when I was first playing through it. Cause I was like, Oh God, what is that? And that, um, made me miss a couple of jumps just because I was distracted by it. But once you get used to it, um, yeah, it is so helpful, uh, especially with like re- like the what you're saying, like the 3D ones where you're behind Crash and he's running away from you technically. Like those segments always in like the Insane Trilogy especially were just like so hard to like gather like how far you were actually jumping and now it, it's just so helpful especially when you have these puzzles where you can uh like s- slow down time and have to do certain jumps 
uh, in a certain amount of time before you, you fuck it up and fall you do your uh, fall you your death. So I, I, it was like a, a subtle thing that I was like, oh, I didn't expect that in in this game. But thinking about it more, I'm like, oh yeah, that's actually really really helpful. I am very very surprised at how committed this game is to not changing what people like about the old Crash games and actually what makes them the Crash games, even if it's things people didn't like. But committing to it and designing a game around those challenges, like. Uh, knowing that his first jump is going to be a short hop, but it's going to be a lot quicker. The second jump gets you higher, but there is you're going to get more airtime. And a lot of the times, the platformer player in you is going to want to just always double jump. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like always whatever. You can't do that in this. It's no. like there's so many times it's about speed and it's about getting across the area because things are falling at the right times. And the way these levels are designed, and this is kind of the Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze thing in me, where I'm like, wow, they really designed all of the levels we played specifically around his moveset that Mario couldn't do this. This has to be a crash thing. Like, yeah. this is designed around the challenges and obstacles that, that crash is fun to play through, right? Mm -hmm. And when you add on the, the, the different mask powers, it never feels, at least so far, like too much is going on. So some new uh, kind of maneuvers that crash has. First off, it very much feels like his moveset's based off crash too which is such a fantastic call. You have the slide, mm -hmm. and then you have that slide jump, which yep. is so satisfying. You can hit R1, and you do that that sweet slide jump, and it's just like, it just feels right. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, I, I've always been bad, especially with like sliding under things and then doing the jump. I've always been bad at that timing, but yeah, it, it definitely feels more attuned to the, the Crash 2 moveset, uh, for sure. Yeah. So there's the Crash 2 moveset that you got going on, but now there's these new masks. And there's still Aku Aku, and it works and functions the same as the original. And they'll still give it to uh, still give them to you once you die a bunch, a bunch of times, which I definitely which did. is going to happen. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, so you get Aku Aku, and it's the same thing where you get an extra hit before you die. If you get two of them, it's kind of like the star in Mario. Mm -hmm. But there's these other masks. There's four masks in the game. In these demos, we only got to see two of them. Uh, they give you different, different powers. Uh, one of them is uh, Kapunawa. Uh, it lets you control time. Mm -hmm. And you get the suit on. It, it doesn't give you an extra hit. That's a, a key thing to keep in mind. So it, it, it just kind of gives you a, a different button to be able to do stuff. For uh, Kapuna Wall, what you get to do is slow down time mm -hmm. uh, with, by hitting hitting R2 and or triangle. And what the, the, the there's, there's gameplay puzzles that they add with this. But most of the puzzles function around the people trying to 100% the game. Mm -hmm. Like the people trying to get all the different crates. And that is another thing that they're really nailing. People love the original Crash games for the um, gems, collecting all the crystals, all the gems, all the different stuff. And there is so much in this. <laughs> now there is, there's hidden gems in the level yep. you can find. There's uh, getting a gem for getting all the crates. There's a gem for getting a certain amount of wampa fruit. You don't need to get all of them, but mm, interesting. like, one of the levels was like 900 that you had to collect. Yeah, was, These are lanky levels, yeah. too. Um, and then there, you get a gem if you beat the level dying less than three times. Like, there's a, a ton uh, of stuff going on this here. This is going to be a, col uh, a collector's uh, dream. And like uh, something that I was also thinking about is <clears throat> I wonder if this is going to be like a, a speed runny game. Uh, just oh, yeah. because like I think it's really relics cool. are back. Yeah, and like I think it's really cool to. It'll be really cool to see like how speedrunners try to take to this because there's so much going on. And yeah, these are lengthy levels, so like I, I would love to see, uh, especially like I, I felt so fast in some segments where I was like I was getting it down, I was getting the puzzles down, and I was like, damn, I can't even imagine how people like some people are gonna try to like break the physics almost and like get around puzzles and shit like that. It's gonna be really cool to see. And then the the other uh, mask we got to use was uh, Lonely Lowly, which allows you to phase shift elements in or out of existence. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a perfect example of the rhythm of this game, oh, yeah. where t some other uh, moveset additions are he can grind on rails now. It's very Sonic. Yep. Uh, he can uh, swing on ropes, which we didn't get to do in the demo, but they, they said that uh, that's going to be in the game as well. Gotcha. And uh, adding those all together, it, there are definitely... Every segment has its own kind of rhythm and its mm -hmm. own pacing. And uh, yeah, there's one specific segment when you get introduced to the phasing mask that feels so good uh, in the, the dinosaur um, level that we played. Where you get introduced to it, you, you kind of put to, put it together, and it's so satisfying to figure out of like the the cadence of like 
dropping down on the vine, getting underneath the vine, and also sh uh, like uh, phasing out items and in items and shit, and then dropping, uh, like jumping back on top of the vine, and then jumping over rocks, and uh, phasing out mushrooms and all this stuff. It like it feels like it's so much at once, but then like after the first time, you're like, okay, I think I can do that. I think I can like really get it and collect everything and, and stuff like that. And that's something impressive that I just want to shout out of just like the, you were saying earlier of like they have a good balance of um, like a 2D and three uh, the 2D aspects and the 3D aspects. But there's also a good balance of just like how addicting it is to try to get everything when once you first get somewhere and it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like you're like you said earlier it's like oh i i, I want to get the, to the next fucking thing like sometimes i had that just because i knew i was doing like some sort of puzzle wrong but there'd be other times where i was like okay i don't need to get those four boxes on the cliff above me while these like ice shards like drop down and i need to slow them down to fig that one is so hard and i tried Here's the thing. so Here's many the thing, times and it was so damn satisfying when i did it man all you got to do is go to the right side and then go back left. Don't try to hop up and it makes it so much easier. And, and, but, <laughs> and that's the kind of fun thing I just want to sh uh, shout out is the uh, kind of third level that we uh, got to see, which was a, a different path uh, of the first level that we played, which was this ice level. And in the are, are we allowed to talk about the first half of the level where, uh, who we get to play as? Um, yes, we are. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in, the, in the first half, uh, it's you play as uh, Neo Cortex, and he's got a completely different moveset. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But then half Halfway through, you uh, phase back to Crash's segment, and you play the second half of uh, the level with Crash, um, but it's all, like, remixed, and there's all these new challenges and puzzles and shit like that. And again, this is going to be another col collector's dream of, like, oh, my God, there's so many things to do in all of these levels, uh, especially when you go back to them and, and, and repeat them. It's going to be so cool. So I'm just going to jump into a couple facts here, because these are some things you don't even know, because uh, it's what I got from the developer walkthrough. And it's, it's pretty cool. So um, there's four masks in the game uh, that give you the, the different powers. We got to see two of them there. Um, the Cortex level, at least when we played it, it wasn't clear if all the Cortex levels are going to be like this um, or, or just this one, but it, they're optional. Like these are they're, they're like bonus mm. challenge levels. Gotcha. So throughout the entire game, you can play as Crash or Coco. They're both equally involved in the story. No gameplay differences between the two of them, but you can choose either. You can switch between them. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, the game also has two modes. There's modern and classic. Uh, we got this in the demo. And classic is essentially just there for people that are purists of Crash and are like, we're doing it. The game is not designed to be played that and way. It's it is so, very much. It's so hard. I tried to do that first level in classic mode. And I'm just going to tell you all now, just play modern. If, you, if you're a purist and you're like, no, nah, I, I lift my nose at the idea of that. Just, just try modern. Just try it. Because I'm telling you, classic is so hard. <laughs> I just feel like the game is designed mm. around the modern. So the difference being you have lives in classic and um, if you die a certain amount yeah, of times. And you, like you're done. when you yeah. get 100 lump of fruit, you, you get an, uh, an extra life and shit like that. Yeah. Whereas in modern, it kind of just incentivizes you to play through and do all the challenges, like try to get all the crates, try to get all the fruit. And where there would be a life box, there's now, uh, you just get like 20 jumper or whatever, it might be 10, I don't remember the mm -hmm. number, but like you just get a lot of the fruit that adds up to your collecting. But it's like, it, I like it because it incentivizes me without being frustrating of wanting to do all the optional challenging stuff. And once you get to that checkpoint, you have all that. So it's just like, oh, this is so nice. I hated in the older games when I was trying to 100% it, I'd get to the bonus like little area and accidentally die and it's like well shit yeah if i want to do this again now i need to go all the way back and and i get that like some people like that i don't it's this it's game not fun. like the way that these challenges are designed reminds me of like celeste where it's mm. like every little bit between each checkpoint reminds me of a room in celeste yeah it, it's and, a, you're you're taking each part of the level just one step at a time essentially yep and it's really nice because in celeste you can get through the challenge but then there's the strawberries yeah. and now you're going to go for them. And I feel like this game does that as well in these bite sized bits in these levels that are really long, but each bit isn't that long. Mm -hmm. So if you do die and you've done it now 20 times, it's never that frustrating because it's kind of like, okay, I got to do the same thing again for the 15th time, but that's only 20 seconds of doing something. Exactly. You know what I mean? 
And like, I like that type of game design so much. Um, but the cool thing is you can change it well and it won't affect your collection percentages. Hmm, interesting. So as you're playing through the game, you can try classic, get as far as you want, switch to modern on a hard level that's bothering you if it's frustrating and you can go back and forth. So that's gotcha. pretty cool. Um, so Cortex. So his levels are are interesting because it seems like, and again, this is where it was a little unclear for me of whether there's Cortex levels that are in the main game Story, itself yeah. or if they're just bonus things. So he com plays completely different than uh, Coco or Crash. Mm -hmm. He only has one jump and he kind of, he has a blaster that functions very similarly to Samus's blaster mm -hmm. where you can kill people, but then also you can like freeze them. Yeah. Um, so it's like you can then use them as platforms. Mm -hmm. You also have a dash attack yeah. that's like very uh, like modern 2D Sonic where you can kind of just like shoot across the level. And he, like, um, he, he, I, I, he, I don't know if you said this, he doesn't have a double jump, I think. Uh, his yeah. jumps are also like way uh, like smaller just because he's a, he's a tiny dude with a very big head. Um, and yeah, it was one of those things. It was like, again, I was thrown in for another loop where I was like, I don't like, how, how do we get around this level as him? And then, it, but it, it, by the time I got to the end of his segment in that, uh, in that level, I was getting the hang of it. So like I went back and did his section over again and it felt so good once it all clicked in yeah. place uh, of like uh, changing. Uh, so like each time you shoot like uh, an enemy that's intended uh, essentially to be a platform, there's like the rock platform that you can just use to like jump and stand on. And then uh, if you shoot him again, it'll uh, turn into like this weird plasma platform where it, like it, it makes it very bouncy. So you can uh, jump really high. And yeah, like going through and uh, the second time around and making sure to try to collect like everything uh, felt really, really good. And I was impressed of how different he felt, but how it, it still felt at home within the game. Totally. And I think that this uh, Cortex section is the best example of this game in a nutshell, which is these levels are expertly crafted around the moveset that this character has. The moveset is frustrating. And it's like it, it. There is that. It's where the it feels authentically Crash Bandicoot, mm -hmm. um, which with that comes this level of you're never fully in control, and it, it is precision yeah. based on where your foot is, or else you're gonna fall in the water. And yeah, and and like and it's and like, like that dash attack that you really need to like prepare yeah. mentally prepare in your head before you do it. Of like, okay, where am I actually going to land at the end of this? Uh, because exactly. yeah, like you said, it, it, it's pre precision based, which is why I went when I went back to it the second time around. I was like, oh, I love these segments, and I, I can't wait to see more of them. So it's, it's really cool stuff. But the idea of these optional levels is it shows you a different perspective of the main story. So mm -hmm. for what we saw here is the first level we played, we got to play three levels. Mm -hmm. One of them was like a, a snowy uh, level. Yeah. Uh, one of them was a dino run towards the camera level. And then the third one was Cortex in the first level. Yeah. So what happens is you play as Crash and when you're playing the, the, the first level that we're talking about, you get to this part where you're about to cross a bridge that has a boat on it, mm -hmm. and then the boat like just randomly explodes and falls. And it ne it's never explained. And you're like, okay, just like a random event in this in this level, whatever. Uh, and then you like, but you it. see crash. There's like a little exclamation point that goes yep. above his head. He's like, huh? Yeah. And so that happened. So then you just go through the level, and that's it. But when you play the Cortex version. You play as Cortex for a while, has separate challenges and all that, and then you see that he's the one that actually causes the the bridge to the the boat to, to fall, mm -hmm. and that fucks up and changes what the level even could be after that. Yep. And then it kind of just gives you that second version of like Crash continuing on, and that's kind of just more like the okay, here's the even higher challenge mode mm -hmm. for the rest of this level. The level's yep. the same, but now uh, different colored crates or whatever are there. Yeah, uh, there, there, there's crates that like will spurt out fire. Um, and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There will be like uh, the the time crates that you need to use uh, that you need to use the slowdown for uh, in different areas uh, to make some uh, challenges harder. Um, and yeah, it was it, it's it wasn't like this. Oh shit, my mind is blown by like the new context of the story. But it's like cute little connections between. It's uh, all cute. Yeah, like Cortex and yeah. uh, Crash's journey, which I, I'm sure we'll see plenty more of uh, in the main game. It just reminded me uh, a lot of little subtle elements that I liked in the like 2D Sonic games where when you're going through a level and like in the background you see a, the boss approaching or whatever. And in the dinosaur level in this, it's like there are 2D moments where you're going and you see the dinosaur running and like you know that he's going to get you. Oh, yeah. He busts through the wall and he starts running after you. And it's just like, it just all of a sudden feels so authentically crash mm -hmm. and, and like 
it's thrilling. Like like running away from the camera. Is it ever fun? No. no. But it but was like, this was and this is like a joke that I've always made because I, I I was streaming so many Naughty Dog games uh, recently and my joke was like they got to remind you it's a Naughty Dog game because it's not a Naughty Dog game unless you run at the camera at some point for some annoying reason. Uh, and this was the first time. It's not Naughty Dog making this, of course, but this was the first time in any uh, like any Crash game where it actually felt fun and thrilling because it's not just like a a big ball running at you it's like this fucking dinosaur that's like beautifully animated doing all this shit interacting with the it's environment fun, in looney the, tunes yeah like. exactly yeah and this there's another moment that we didn't get to actually see cortex's side but in this you do see crash have the exclamation point he's like huh so mm -hmm. it's like uh, something causes an avalanche to fall and block the dinosaur yeah so it's like clearly we're gonna get to play cortex's side and, and he fucks something up or whatever yeah. <laughs> um so that's pretty cool so some other stuff that uh that's really interesting we're going pretty long here well we'll wrap it up soon but I, i'm really stoked on I this know, game and again, <laughs> it's crash it is what it is like I, I don't know like if it's everyone's cup of tea but i am happy you you seem to be right in the same boat with me yeah. where i'm like holy crap i'm at, like, like i'm at the point like if you liked uh, i don't know if like you grew up with the crash bandicoot games but if you played insane trilogy and you liked uh uh, uh, liked what that was, you're about to get like a, a little more juiced up version of those games that feels a little different, but modern and it's going to be fun as hell. I easily expect this to be the best Crash Bandicoot game ever made. And again, like I don't, I I, I see it. Like I, I don't disagree that there, there's no way that I'm like, nah, Crash 2 or Crash Warped or anything. Like I, I see it. And I'm, I'm again, the more I think about this, like I, it's becoming one of my more anticipated games this year. It's, it's exciting. So October 2nd is when it's coming out. Um, they're saying there's going to be a bunch of Easter eggs uh, referencing the older games, which is cool and exciting to see. Um, so they're saying there's going to be a ton of content. They didn't say uh, amount of levels. Um, mm. They didn't go into details there, but they're just like, there's going to be a ton of content. We're really priding ourselves in like really making sure that this is a, a game that is worth the $60 price tag. They and understand. Like, just to reiterate, like these, the levels that we played at least were, were meaty. Um, like I, I, I think even in like my third time running through that first level and dying a minimal amount of times, like maybe like five times, it still took me like a good 10 minutes to get through that level just because there's so much going on i mean yeah well for me because i was always trying to get all this stuff like it took me a lot longer than 10 minutes yeah. and like like these were long chunky levels uh with a lot of fun stuff to do didn't feel padded out mm -hmm. um they were saying that these levels are about halfway through the game okay yeah so for an idea they're hard they're yeah, real they hard yeah like this and, I'm, this game is gonna be tough y'all just mentally prepare for it because I was not mentally that, prepared, and it like I was I was fucked up the first time I played it. <laughs> yeah, when uh, the the dev one of the questions that people asked him was, uh, "Is this game going to be challenging?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, OG Crash fans." And, and he was so enthusiastic. He's like, "Yeah, awesome. like we know what we're doing here. Like, there's we we have to nail that." Uh, but they're also like, "We understand that like Insane Trilogy was." three games worth of levels and stuff that we understand that there's a different context for this. And I don't know that it's $60 actually, I, I said that, but mm. uh, it might be 40, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the exact uh, retail of this, but they are like, we are aware that this is, that we need to, to make sure it's filled with content. And with that, they said that there will not be micro, micro trans transactions. And then they reiterated, there will never be micro transactions. There are well, there no in-app purchases. There are no microtransactions at launch or forever so nice very cool good to hear um let's see what else we got um okay the last thing is the world map there will not Ooh. be warp rooms uh it is uh, going to be more it's going to be more like crash one uh this can be something nice. called the dimensional map I like so that. You are kind of like going, around something. going going around going back to insane trilogy i actually kind of prefer like seeing uh crash kind of like go on this like actual journey instead of like the warp rooms from like two or three you know yeah see it's weird i love the warp room so much especially in two <laughs> um but it's like i i i get that they're what they're going with this is like they don't want to limit it they don't and they don't want it to just be like well okay we have the x amount of levels so instead of having five floors of this warp room there's gonna be 50 or whatever yeah. the hell it's like so it, i i get it and again this goes back to the donkey kong country um kind of vibe yeah vibe where it's just like the crash bandicoot one in my opinion is much more a sequel to crash to donkey kong country than to like mario mm, yeah you know um and so to see them kind of now where they're at i'm like this is pretty cool I, yeah. i'm stoked about this very excited for this game um anyways ladies and gentlemen stay tuned here to youtube.com slash kind of funny games podcast services for 
first impressions, more of our thoughts on the upcoming video games, which there'll be many. Even on the Activision side, we got Tony Hawk, man. We got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 coming before this game. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's September. That's early. September September, 4th, yeah. September 4th, and then a month later, we get a crash. We're getting the warehouse demo uh, August 15th. Oh, I forgot. So, yes. It's going to be a good time, man. It's going to be a good time. Anyways, until next time.